You've reached Monster 911, and I'm Lance Hightower. I've been taking cryptid emergency calls for over five years. If you have a cryptid emergency, please call our toll-free number, 866-306-8085. I can help you. What's your emergency? Hello, and welcome back to Monster 911. This is the first of two parts of Encounter with an Unknown Creature. First of all, guys, remember to check out our merch available on the Monster 911 website store where you can buy a t-shirt and show some support for the local podcast show. And if you think you've seen anything you cannot explain and want to talk to someone and you don't want to call our toll-free number, you can get in touch with me via the contact form on the website. Go to www.monster911.com and go to the contact at the top of the menu bar and that'll lead you to a contact form that you can fill out. Again, names and occupations will be left out, but at least give me a contact name when I call you. Now, what a show we have for you today. When this guest contacted me, he was hesitant at first to share the story, but I'm so thankful that he did. This is one of the most interesting unidentified creature encounter interviews that I've had conducted. The guest describes some interesting features on this unidentified animal being on all fours with, well, I'm going to leave this to the guest to inform you on what he saw, but its eyes locked right onto him. Scary, scary stuff to say the least. What could this creature have been? Let's dive straight into this interview. Listen closely, guys, and really try to put yourself in this guest's shoes as he shares his fascinating yet terrifying experience. I mean, I don't really know what to think about what I... Wh the <clears throat> I really don't know what to think. I don't know why, I, if, even if I should tell you, because I try to go and tell somebody else, like that guy, because I listen to a lot of his um, shows, and uh, the more and more I listen, the more and more it, it, it started to sound like, you know, maybe these people saw what I saw, but none of them ever said anything about the tail I saw, but, you know, the more and more I listened, I was like, well, maybe I just saw, like, a different version of, like, a dog man, but the more and more I listen, uh, the more and more I think that I feel I, I, have, I have seen a different version, maybe not a different version, but a whole different type of cryptid on its own. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually believe that I saw a form of a, like, well, if there's such a thing as dog man, I believe that there's such a thing as a cat man. And even further than that, like there's possibly a lemur man or that's going to sound really crazy. Ass. It's, it's not really. I'll back up just a little bit. And a lot of what I'm going to say I cannot sit here and give you absolute guaranteed proof. But I will say this. If a person, we know that there is lots of intelligent, educated people such as yourself that are very reasonable in mind and body. When they see something, you just know they saw something out of the ordinary. You could hear it in their voice, their tonality, right. everything. So... Um, if these yeah. things, we know that Bigfoot exists, we know that variations of Bigfoot or Sasquatch exist, and there's been lots of people explain it wasn't quite the one that looks like that guy but or this one, but it was like this. So we know there are variations of that species of hominoid. Well, the right. same goes true with this dogman creature. Um, the ones that we're looking at in our area is very much the same that uh, Wiley Dave, a member on our team, saw back in 2013. It's of, it looks like more of a canine morphology or a dog, and mm -hmm. it it's just about four and a half times bigger, four to four and a half times bigger. In other words, instead of a large breed dog that, that would weigh, say, 100 pounds, this one's weighing 400 to 500 plus pounds. And it yeah. it looks a little bit different in its muzzle, in its ears, in its hawks. And, of course, the most notable is not only the size, but its ability uh, and characteristics of not only being large, but massive and 
fast and super strong Uh and how it runs and walks is quite unusual when you talk to these eyewitnesses. They explain something right. quite different than the average dog when it runs or when it walks. So it, oh, yeah. with all that being said, what I'm saying is this. I know, and in, I know to you it does sound crazy to the average person, but to people that know about these creatures, there's a lot more out there in the woods of America besides oh, just yeah. Dogman and Bigfoot. I'm telling you right now, as my brother Lane would say, if people only knew what was really out there, in the woods, they would never leave the house and they'd crawl into a corner and go yeah. suck their thumb. I know they're all around us and uh, they're in the parks and stuff. I, I, I've started to look at baths and things like that around you know, my surrounding areas and where I've moved to now, which is Washington State. And I see a park right now that uh, it's called Park and... Uh, <laughs> I don't really want to go into further detail, but like, I just went down there for a little bit because I had to just, you know, I, I just know that they're they're around there because I I had sensed it one time, um, like just things felt like they were watching me, and it's just like pitch because I would go for, uh, I'd do like longboarding and stuff, and I and I do a lot of night riding. Hmm, okay. That's the time I go out and. Uh, yeah, those things are, it's always in the back of my mind, like, you know, there's something watching me. Um, I don't like to sound paranoid or anything, but, you know, after what I've seen, dude, I know there's things, I, I doubt that they're watching me, but, you know, there's always that, like, now that I've seen this shit, it's like, mm-hmm. there's always, uh, there's, it's always in the back of my mind. It's, I, uh, I've heard the same stuff from other people, and it's kind of sucks, I, you know, at the same time, like, I, it's like when you see it, your whole reality crashes and you don't really have anybody to talk to. Well, and that's the thing that, you know, what our mission is very, is quite simple. Our, our mission is that uh, we know these things exist. That's not even in question. When you, you kind of hit it on the head there is that when you, when you see something like this that goes against all reality, you know, when we go to these, I'm a big science fiction nut. When it comes to shows like The Matrix and things, my son and I, we love going yeah. to watch the movies. And we love horror movies, too. And when we go to these movies and you get frightened or you get scared, when the movie's over, at least you can walk away and say, man, I'm glad that thing didn't exist or does exist. Right. But yeah. the problem is that when you see these creatures, you realize that the world does have monsters and that these things are real. And that really shakes your world upside down because your mind cannot wrap around this physical being. Where did it come from? Why did I see it? What did it want? What was it doing? Has anyone else saw it? How come no one's talking about this? So you just, it's really yeah. hard to go to the average Joe to talk about this, let alone family. Family will listen. But the one thing yeah. I've learned about family is that we've told our stories to our family. And I'll just use my dad as an example. He's a great guy. He's been a hunter for years and years and years. Never seen anything outside the normal wildlife. So yeah, he brings up dad. he brings up good questions. And we've we've actually gone round and round about this. Is that he keeps saying, "Well, how come and I haven't seen? How come I haven't seen?" I said, "Well, I can't answer that. The only thing I can tell you is that how do you know something wasn't watching you?" And if it wanted to reveal itself, then it would. If not, you'd never know it. You go out by it, you never know. So I don't know, yeah. but sometimes family can be very difficult to share with because they can be, in many ways, I understand why, rightly so, the worst critic. I mean, so you want to be able to share with someone. Every story takes, you have to be able to get past the person's mind that these things do exist and if you never get past that part one you can't get past into part two what happened what did you see so they'll just listen to what they want to listen for and i i understand because it's too frightening to think of the reality that these things do exist it's easy to oh you're just yeah you just saw you were just tired you know, your mind played tricks at night. Were you drinking? Are you taking drugs? You know, it's easy to default. Yeah, yeah that's exactly what I've gotten. Yeah, it's it's easy, and that's why, because it's easy for to, for me to say that, regardless of your feelings, because really what we found when people get aggressive or mad when you when and they and and they really block what you're telling them, 
it's too scary to think about the reality. They themselves are frightened. Would you mind and go back? Kind of what what happened here? Okay, yeah. Uh, about four years ago, or I was 21 or 22. Um, I apologize. I really can't remember the exact age, but I'm pretty sure I was like 21. So I was almost finishing with my school. I was going to be in and um, uh, it was like a Thursday, and um, it was late at night, and I decided, you know, I was just going to crash for the night because I had to wake up early and start school at like, you know, 5 till 2, two in the afternoon every every Monday through Thursday, and uh, I think I was going to go in on a Friday to, you know, catch up on some work because mm-hmm. uh, we had a lot of pro- actual physical projects that we had and get handed in for school. And, uh, you know, I decided I'm going to go for a run because I just couldn't sleep and I just needed, I wanted to go to bed. Like, I, I was a pretty determined student and wanted to get, I wanted to just get this over with, get it, get done with school, you know, get, get to my weekend. So mm-hmm. I decided to go for a run. And I, and I have done this run, uh, you know, a couple times. Um, I, but this is about the third time I had ever ran through the park at night and uh, uh, you know I'm going to just stop right now because I I will continue but I just want to say I'm I'm not really sure what you're going to do with this story but um, I'd appreciate it if you could leave the location out until I go back and visit because I'm going to go I've already I have multiple stories, I guess you could say, because I've gone back to the same location. I'm glad you brought that up because I'll tell you what our policy is very strict. What we do is this. We we never give personal names. We don't even, we don't even give nicknames. We don't give what the person does for a living. We don't give the town. We don't give any specific location sites. I don't care if it's on public land, um, state land, uh, or private land. Okay. So we keep everything very confidential. And so as to protect the integrity of the person, the locale, everything. So, and we have okay. always abided by that for the last, ever since we found out maybe about a year and a half ago, almost two years now. I really don't, I really don't care what, um, I guess, I don't know what this thing is or what it could do to me if it ever figured out that I ever told anything about this man, I mean, or this thing. Um, but I, I also don't really want to be targeted either that, that I doubt I would be. I feel like if I would have went to the police right away, I probably would have been. That's why I didn't. Mm -hmm. But (laughs) I just have kind of, kind of concerns for that animal. Like it should be left alone. If anybody's going to mess with it, it's going to be me because of what, you know, we encounter each other. And, and last time I called, he like, kind of was like, yeah, you didn't see what you saw. And that was like the most, like, why would you call me to tell me, no, I didn't see that. And then not even want to listen to my story. Mm -hmm. It was very, it was very odd. But anyways, that's, that's a, here, I did, I digress. Um, okay. So let me get back to the story. So yeah, once again, um, I decided I want to go for a run through my park, which I had gone through my whole life living in that town. I lived there from kindergarten till uh, I think I was 22. Mm. I had gone to that park through my elementary school, through my middle school. Uh, that's eight years or nine. Yeah, eight. eight. But, uh, yeah, I'd gone to this. I had actually heard... One time when I was uh, younger, sledding about chupacabra, but didn't ever think anything of it. That's a little side story. But anyways, okay, I'm running the park. It's like pitch black out. There's a moon. There's clouds in the sky. But from a distance, you can see that the park is, of course, lit up near the buildings because there's buildings on the left side of this road that I'm taking and uh, like a racetrack and a hockey rink. And those are where the only lights are. And on the right side of the the road is an open, 
uh, sort of grass fields, and then there's a hill to the front of me and woods all around. Now, uh, when I got into this, when I started to get into this um, park, I kind of, I mean, this is kind of intense stuff. Because in the back of my mind, I didn't know about these things, but I was like, you know, <laughs> you know, like if it's if I'm gonna die today, sort of thing, then take me is what I was kind of thinking. And I'm like 21 at the time, so in my mind, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm kind of doing self, something that's, you know, boosting me up and making me stronger by going out and conquering my fears by running mm-hmm. or, or by jogging, um, you know, in, into the unknown. Mm-hmm. So that's what I would do. And that's why I would go night riding and do all these, because I, I, um, my dad taught me when I was younger that you got to go out and you got to listen to the sounds of the night and get used to it and not be afraid. And so I, 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 you know, that's just kind of how I am. And I don't find a lot of people, I would do a lot of this stuff by myself. But yeah, anyways, I'm running through. And uh, another note to take while I'm running, I don't just, I'm not, I'm not like full running and you can hear me running down the block. I like to run like, as in a shuffle so that when you, when I'm running, I'm running like a ninja because I don't want anybody to hear me on that night. I don't, I want to, I want to take, Anything I find off guard, I don't want to be thrown off guard. <clears throat> but as I was getting through the park and in and taking this path through the park, and I got about halfway through, almost halfway through, I'm looking at the hill in front of me that leads up into the woods and the water tower where I'm at. And right at the bottom of the hill, in the pitch black darkness, is a, a lemur tail that had to have been four to six feet long on its own, and it went just like a lemur tail, black, white, black, white, black, white, all the way to the tip, all the way to the end, and it curled at the top three or, or one, like two or three times. I'm not kidding. Usually you'll see like one curl, mm-hmm. but this thing had a definite two to three curls at the tip. So that's why I know it was like really mm-hmm. long, and I just saw it bouncing up in, in, in the in the darkness, and I was like, am I hallucinating? Excuse me for my language. Um, and uh, I'm like, what the heck? And I'm just like continuing to running, and this is just like sort of hitting me, and then I notice it's like, you know, as it's bouncing up in the ground, I'm like, well, it stopped, and then all of a sudden I see, a, you know, this creature, like, pawing around on the ground or like sniffing around and like he was like feeling around on the ground with his hands and he was on all fours and in, and his hands almost looked like tiny little the best way I could describe it at the time was they were like little rat hands and I mean they looked like he had four fingers he had claws and at this point I'm like I instantly stopped and it's still like uh moving around on the ground and she, or like you know with, with his hands stationary sniffing around and then it stopped and at this point my mind is racing and I'm getting in this primal uh, uh, adrenaline stage mm-hmm. where I've heard it before where you can't even I couldn't even move and I didn't know what to do I like my, my uh, I remember my dad like well, my dad had told me when I was younger like you never walk away from, uh, you never turn your back on like a, per- a predator. You, you stand your ground. So that's what I did. So I stood my ground, but it, it, I was like, what the, f-? you know, what is this thing? Like, is, is this a panther? Cause it had like jet. I could, I couldn't even see it in the darkness. It had jet black, you know, like very plush fur. It wasn't shaggy. I hear everybody talking about this shaggy fur. I didn't see shaggy fur. I saw very bush panther fur, like, you know, panther-like fur. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, geez, what the... And I'm trying to, like, is that a black bear? Is that a, you know, is that a panther? Is that a... I could... I was, like, trying to think, that's not a wolf, and this isn't a panther, and this isn't a bear, because nothing like this has a tail. And I'm like, this is an amazing tail. I'm like, what is this thing? And I became less scared and more curious now. And then all of a sudden, that thing looked at me with uh, huge, glowing, yellow, amber eyes. Mm. And all I 
and I didn't see like a, a black dot in the middle. All I saw was like, I've heard it before. It was like holding two flashlights up to his eyes, and they had it, and it was like his eyes were flashlights. That's exactly what it seemed like. It was like he had ultra vision, and uh, he just stared at. We just stared at each other longer, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, what the, you know. And the thing did have a snout, from what I remember. It didn't have that long of a snout, but it did, and it did have pointing ears. But the ears were almost as big as its head. It was very odd. Like what it reminded me of is mm-hmm. um, like a like bat ears, hmm. and its teeth and its teeth and mouth reminded me of like a bat mouth and a bat nose, but it was like elongated a little more. But because it had looked at me and like shown its, because it was when it had, when it first seen me, it didn't look at me. And I saw it grinning, and I'm like, "What the? F-? How is? Why grinning? is it grinning at me? Oh, yeah, like man. like it was like grinning at me. Like like I had caught it off guard. It had caught me off guard, but I had caught it off guard more than it had caught me off guard. And it was like grinning at me, like like this is what I had thought. Like it was grinning at me, like oh, nice dude, you got me. So now what? And then it looked at me and kind of like showed me its front teeth. And that's what it kind of reminded me of, like baboon or, or bat style, like teeth. And, um, you know, and then I was like, gosh, why can't I, why can't I see this body? And right when I said that, the clouds moved just a little bit where I saw like a reflection off its skin and its muscle tone was ridiculous. I saw like, it was like it didn't even have skin that it was so defined. Like if you were to rip the skin off like a human, it sounds kind of messed up, but you know, we have all these muscles underneath us and we don't really see that muscle definition because we don't, you know, expand those muscles out and right. see popping through the, the skin. And that's exactly what I saw on my, like I was like, damn! Like this thing's off, and it, and it, and its arms was like, oh my gosh, you know, like those look like human arms. But you know, there's, it, you know what I mean? It's like it's human arms because they're covered in a black fur. But, but it like, just was like, wow. yeah, like human like. Yeah, I mean that's like the best way to describe them being like human, and them in one fluid motion it got on its back legs and that was when I was like what? whoa and I became even more curious I was like what the Good you know like what Lord. is this thing and uh, I just was like whoa dude what the? my I everything that I thought I was trying to pin it on that it could be just went out the door I'm like uh, well I mean it might be a bear but that's not a bear because nothing, no bear has that lemur tail. Never seen a blood, never heard of any black bear in the town I was at, you know, maybe a little outside of where we're at, but very, very rarely would you ever see a black bear. And I know this thing wasn't no black bear. And, uh, uh, you know, he got back down on all fours after that looked back at me one quick second, looked forward ahead, gave this huff, like, <sighs> like it was pissed off at me. Like, mm-hmm. like I didn't do, I didn't, like, I didn't start a, a race or I didn't confront him or I didn't wave at him. I wish I would have waved at him, but I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. I was kind of frozen in curiosity and just to kind of give it its respect and, hey, I'm not going to go poke a, poke a bear or anything. Or try to go hug it, especially when I saw the claws on it, and it kind of was like, hmm. Uh, but yeah, once again, it, it it well, it only did this once, but like I said, it got back down on all fours, looked at me, looked back forward in the direction it was pretty much facing when I had first met it, gave a huff, and that was when, from where it was standing to the tree line, it bounded in about I'd say four bounds and from where it was at to the tree line I would say at least a football field or longer 
it was there in like two seconds and I had to turn my whole body to even keep up with it. It was moving that quick and it, it had to have been bounding at, you know, 30 feet at a time. And, uh, that was when, um, my jaw dropped, like, you know, like the, the, like that's what I've never felt my jaw drop like that. Like I was just in pure shock. And then, and then that's when it kind of hit me like reality. And I decided, oh my God, you know, either God protected me straight up from being mauled by this thing, or it decided it didn't want to get me. And that had crossed my mind because of the speed, power, and agility that I saw these things had. And that's when I kind of got real scared and almost like, you know, passed out at that point. But instead of doing that and like, you know, crying and stuff, you know, the more manly thing that I thought to do at the time was give three deep, like, like guttural um, barks at it. Like, like I had won. I wish I hadn't done that, but I did. And I like was like, oh, oh. and then on my third one, I was like, oh, and like ran away. It sounds kind of funny, but and ridiculous now that I think about it, especially from all the stories I had heard and all the um, animal characteristics and, and mind things or the, the way it thinks that I probably shouldn't try to provoke a uh, prey mm. or a predator like that ever again. Um, but I just didn't know at the time. So that's kind of what I did. And then I just ran. I, I, I was planning on taking the road around because it was even it, 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 this whole road, you know, goes into like uh, near a building that's kind of creepy. It's like a facility building for the maintenance people of the park. I think they stole a bunch of equipment in there. But, you know, I was going to run over there, but I was like, you know, screw this. And I just bolted across the field that was behind me towards the racetrack and hockey rink and the horse stables that are over there that they use for the all that. And I had ran faster than I've ever ran in my entire life. The whole time just thinking, what was that? How come it didn't get me? Should I go to the police? What do I do? Should I grab a shotgun? Like, I'm just like, what do I do? Why didn't that thing grab me? And then I'm like, my mind is raised. I, I, my mind probably didn't slow down for the next three days. I couldn't really concentrate on anything. All I could think about was that thing. And like, what did I see? So I started researching it and then kind of writing a story or two about it on Reddit, but I only got one person that kind of said anything about it. But that one person who said something, at the time, I didn't really think anything of it about what they had saw or what they had told me they saw one time walking on a path, but it sounded like they had encountered a dog man too, or at least... In my opinion, I don't think I saw a dog man like I said at the beginning. I think I saw a cat man, and I can go into further detail. Yes, on why please. I think that. Yeah, please go ahead. Well, I guess I'll go into a Native American tribe close to my town called, well, the town I grew up is called spelled exactly like that and then there, there's a town it's called there's a town next to our town called two now the tribe of an indian tribe and uh i started looking at their legends and there's a such a thing called the water panther a water panther is exactly what i saw but it, they never described the tale that's why i think they have a sheen to them is because they live near the water like otters um, that sounds kind of wild, but wa otters move in packs, and they're actually, I don't know if you've ever seen a large otter, they're actually a pretty cool and crafty little animal that works together in packs and, you know, lives in the water kind of like a beaver and is mm -hmm. kind of a bad, bad, uh, badass of any pond. And that's kind of what relates me to thinking why it had a sheen or a type of reflectiveness to it when I saw it, the moonlight hit it. Mm-hmm. 
because uh, I thought it was, I could have, it should have, all I can think of, I don't think it had some cloaking device, because it's just, it was its fur that was super pitch black. I just think, you know, it was wet, and, and it moves quickly to where, you know, it probably was in the water at the time, and it just got out, you know, that's all I can think of, and it probably cleans its tail off pretty quick, because from what I saw, you know, it was a lemur tail, but it was a lot bigger than any lemur tail I'd ever seen. And I've never seen one in my entire life besides on TV and like videos and, you know, pictures on, on Google or whatever. But it was just, the, the tail was so cool. I'll never forget that. And I, I, every time I hear a, a, a sighting about a dog, man, I'm keep, I keep waiting to hear about the tail. And I hear other podcasters like, did it have a tail? Uh, mm. Yeah, I did, but it didn't have a lemur tail like mine did. I think I, I have, I've seen one of the coolest cryptids there it is mm-hmm. because the tail was just so cool. And that, if I didn't see the tail, I would have never saw that thing. I, I would have probably ran right by it, and I, if I would have saw it, I would have crapped my pants even harder and been like, you know, that's a panther for sure. It's the only thing that kept me from really see, saying, oh, it's not a panther. And then, yeah, but... uh Going into the actual cat people, I had called up and, you know, he had pretty much blown me off like, oh, yeah, that's not what you saw, and I don't have time to listen to your story. But I had time to call you and tell you no, which was very odd to me. And, uh, you know, I was kind of bummed out about that. I was like, you know, maybe he was right. Maybe I didn't see Dog Man. Or... But then I was like, no, I did see Dog Man. I know I saw a version of it. Like, he's wrong. That's wrong. And, you know, he doesn't know shit about what I saw, and he doesn't. But I just kind of like kind of blown back by what he saw. But I came home one night and from work, and I'm I think I think it was actually a weekend, and I started my weekend off on a Friday, of course. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching the YouTube YouTube videos, probably listening to Dog Man, and I see in my recommendations David Bowie. I'm like that's weird, Cat People. What's that? You know. Mm-hmm. And then I noticed the thumbnail of the video is a panther. I'm like, shut up. So I clicked on it. David Bowie made a music video about what I saw. Hmm. It, they made a movie about cat people. I haven't seen that movie yet, but I can guarantee it has information in it. And then that's when it's just started snowballing and things started coming back to me not only through past experiences, but also everything that I see in the world around us. Comic books, comic book characters, you know, movies. Thing I can think of, I see that thing now right in front of me. I'm just kind of laughing like they're just talking us this whole time. I don't know who it is or what they know, but I know they know something. And that music video burning in fire or burning down on fire. I can't remember the freaking name, but it's like put burning out, on fire. Uh, put out fire? Yeah. It's it's like gasoline putting out fire. I don't know. But you got to watch this music video, bro. And if you want to watch it together with me, I can explain the whole thing through detail. It's wild, man. Because throughout the music video, it shows like a group of tribal men and they're all packed together in this scene, and they're, like, poking at something with their spears. And I know it's that thing. And then the next scene goes to, like, this girl entering a cave. And as she's entering the cave, to the right of the cave is a cave painting of a bipedal cave painting drawing of a bipedal animal with a... With a you know, black, white, black, white tail or some type of really long tail. And then it's just showing these uh, scenes of panthers hanging out in trees and stuff. And I'm like, this is David Bowie was telling us, man. And I know for sure that he was. I mean, I'm not like a huge fan of David Bowie or anything, but I just, I just know he was. And I, I believe that Cat People, that I'd li- really like to watch that movie. I haven't really seen it. But I know Cat People, there's got to be something that needs to be able for that, you know, that, that uh, 
Well, movie. we there's there's a lot of there's definitely a lot of debate. You kind of hit it right on the uh, head there, where a lot of um, what's in our movies today, especially the science. Of course, there's a lot of CGI now, which we didn't have years ago. But with CGI, you're able to get so real with everything, and that the reality, the the physicality of what exists, has been played out to make real on in movies and um, in books. Uh, so I do think that there is, uh, and you could go as far as saying some of our technology we have today, when by the time the public gets it, it's from other sources that people say was from other intelligent beings. I mean, so it can definitely, right. you know, who knows? We don't really get told the truth. Um, we don't, we find things out years and years and years later. I have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Um, I think one of the things the why people don't get to see all these details is because they're they're always they're doing something. They get fixated on the head or a particular body part, and they don't get a chance to quickly observe all of the well, other areas of this creature. Yeah that they're seeing and so they're either driving they got to pay attention to driving or they're they're doing something whereas you are able right. to stand still and you you're a yeah. very good observer and so you just didn't you didn't get fixated on the head you looked at the tail you saw well other features I couldn't take my eyes off the tail and that's like my eyes i was physically forcing my eyes because i knew right in that moment okay this is a one in a lifetime this is a once in a lifetime opportunity but after hearing all the other stories, it's they're a lot more common than you think. And I have some more stories to go into that relate to this. But, yes, I know what you're saying. My eyes were bouncing all over the place. But, I, like I said, I could not take my eyes off that tail. But I made sure in that moment that I was trying to pick out these key features because I know one day I'd want to be able to tell them to somebody. The only thing, I couldn't, the only thing I'm not going to be able to tell you is I couldn't see its feet. I couldn't see its feet at all. Hmm. I, all, all, I, I, all I could see was its thighs that were way massive and a lot bigger than I've heard it before. It's almost like it's bigger than its hip or its waist. It's got a very small waist, and it did have a hunch on it when it was on all fours. It, it did not. No, it, it did. It did. It did. It did have a hunch in it. It did have a hunch, and but then when it got up on its back legs, it was like the hunch was gone, and it was standing up erect. It was like. You know, a, a bodybuilder walking down the boardwalk, and he's got his like arms hung out like a grill. Like, yeah, like dude, I'm I'm the strongest guy on this boardwalk. Yeah. I, essentially, what I thought right away when it was standing on its back legs, it was sizing me up because I was on my, of course, back legs, or I'm normal. I'm a human, so I stand on my legs. So I think it was doing that to be like, yeah, whatever, dude, I can stand on my back legs too. Or, or check this out, and. I don't think it was more than seven feet tall. It, it didn't seem like it was much taller than me. You know, if it was, I heard these stories of them being really, really tall, and I, I, I think it was taller than me. I'm about five. I'm like five ten, five eleven. So I know it was taller than me, but it didn't tower me by any means. But it was hard to tell how tall it was because it was in the open and it was on a hill, sort of. But. Yeah, go on to what your question. I'm sorry, what were your questions about? No, that? no, I uh, this tail again. Um, it you said it had curls in it instead of just one curl. Yeah. It had multiple curls yeah. in it, and you said yeah, that it, it was multiple. striped. Was did I hear that right? Where it kind of alternated yeah. on stripes. Well, it's exactly like a lemur tail. Doesn't a lemur tail go black, white, black, white, black, white, black, right. white, white, all the way to the tip? Right. Yeah, that's exactly what it did. So the tail wasn't um, the the striping and the length of this tail. It was more of a you could definitely tell there's a round shape. It wasn't like a bushy type of. Uh, well, it was. You know, it was a bushy tail. It was a fat tail. That's why I was like, oh, Geez. okay, okay. Fat, like a normal lemur tail is nice and like okay. I'm not gonna say it was like shaggy and bushy and scraggly and all that. Because this tail was plush. It was like a plush, just like its gotcha. fur was plush. It wasn't, um, I, if I was to go up to that tail, I guarantee, like if, 
there, there would be just so many hairs on it that it wouldn't be uh, it just so defined and it, it was so pretty. It was so magnificent. I was like, that's the only thing that really kept me from freaking out. Mm-hmm. That tail, honestly, because I was like, that tail is so cool, you know. Like, right. Some type of, you know, I don't know. I, 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 the whole ordeal has made me well it made me come closer, to God, but. Well, the, you say some things that's very interesting and striking. Um, uh, one of the things when you compared it to an otter on like how the otters and the clans and everything's together and they take care of each other, and uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Also, what helps an otter is the oils in the hair. And I know my brother, yeah. he had a very close encounter with a Bigfoot some years ago back where we used to live in western Oklahoma. And it was just west of town on a river bottom area that everybody goes to party in high school. And it was just him and another guy, and they were going to drink a couple beers. And before they even opened up the first one, he saw this Bigfoot traveling across the field. And the moon was out. It was a moonlit night. You didn't need a light. Um, When he first saw it, the sun was setting, but it was still daylight. It was in the summer. It was in July. But as the sun set, the moon came out. It was brilliant, bright. But he noticed that there was a glimmering, a sheen to it. And we thought, and he thought, that it was probably the oils in the hair that gave it this glistening look. It was so shiny looking. And it was like oils. um, Well, that makes sense. I I would believe that. But I don't think, I I guess you could say oils. I would think more grease, just like we get greasy hair, Mm. you know, if we don't Mm -hmm. wash for a long time. Right. I guess it was oil. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. When you when you first saw it and it was kind of it was down on the ground, how it, about estimate the distance? How how far were you when you stopped I, to take a look at this? Okay. Um, I want to give you the best accurate. I'm trying to think. It's just really hard because it was on a hill mm. late at night. Um, I, I'm going to say anywhere from twenty to thirty feet. It was because I know the reason it scared me. Because I saw how far it could bound, and I'm like, that thing was close enough to bound right on top of me. Wow, that was actually really was, close. I was 20, yeah, dude, I was really oh close Oh my to gosh. It. I, I'm, I'm almost going to say I was even closer than that. And I, from all the stories I've heard, I'm like, how the heck did I, how did I catch this thing off guard? Especially with those ears and its vision. But the way I saw it moving in the darkness... I had seen, recently seen a video. Okay, I've heard people say it reminded me of a cartoon, and that's exactly how I thought. I'm like, I'm not looking at a freaking cartoon animal right now. Hmm. This is a cartoon. But when I saw it bounding in the in the distance, when I first came across it, it reminded me of a cartoon. I couldn't think of the cartoon at the time, but I looked up the video like a couple of days ago. I looked up Pepe Le Pew the black and white skunk, and there's something about black and white animals, killer whales, uh, I don't know about penguins, but, you know, they're not very killer, but uh, skunks, uh, lemurs, there's something about black and white that I'm trying to figure out why are certain animals black and white. But anyways, I saw this thing, you know, bouncing up in the, di- or I just saw the tail bouncing, but where I had also saw a bee that it did the same type of bounding, but it was quicker. But if you look up Pepe Le Pew, the way he stalks his women or his cat or whoever he's chasing after, he is bouncing. And as he's hitting the ground, he's instantly up in the air, like, boom. And he's just like, no effort at all, just effortlessly chasing the cat that he that he has a crush on and he wants to talk to. And he's just, for miles, no problem, bounding singing his little French song that Pepe Le Pew does, and that is exactly what reminded me of what I saw. you got to go look it up on YouTube, Pepe Le Pew hopping compilation, but that's exactly what it reminded me of, and I'm thinking, well, if you wanted to speed up, you'd get a lot more speed then. And I'm like, it looks like he's not even doing anything, and he's exerting. That's the thing that uh, strikes me also, is the your verbiage in the description is because we have interviewed so many people regarding seeing these dogman type creatures. And I did yeah. an investigation, in the field investigation, uh, west of Tulsa. 
a gentleman uh-huh. opened his trailer door. Actually, him and his wife were sitting in their trailer, and they had they were watching a movie that had surround sound. And all cool. of a sudden, they heard boom, 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 or something running across the trailer top, the roof. Oh, wow. And he thought, what the heck? And so they turned off. They thought it was on the surround sound. So they shut it off immediately, and then they heard it boom, 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 again. Wow. And, and then, like, boom, like, like it took a final bounce or something. And he thought, what the heck? So yeah. he he was in the kitchen. They had to go through this kitchen. And when he was going through the kitchen, they had a back door that they rarely went through. It had these wooden stairs, but they were old outside. And there was no light on the outside. It was broke. But as he went by yeah. the door, he saw a shadow. And he thought, there's a guy right there. And he told his wife, he stood right there. He says, go get my gun. I'm not going to move. Go get my gun. So she got him his gun. He didn't move. And this thing was trying to move out of the sight. Every time he moved, it would move a little bit to this way or that way. And the window was vertical and about four inches wide. So it was really hard to get a full representation of what the heck he was looking at. He thought it was a guy. But then again, it's about 12 feet up on this roof. How can a guy do that? So he opened the door in this blackness, although he it was still light enough he could see there was a, a night light outside, one of these uh, light pole outside, but it was casting a little bit of a shadow where he was at, and he saw this figure that was about eight feet tall, about less than ten yards, right at nine yards, and it was growling mm-hmm. at him, and he saw these massive shoulders, and he shot at it at close range, And he is former military, and he practices all the time. So he shot. It turned around almost a little slow like, not fast. He shot again on the backside, and he watched it step over, not jump over, step over a five-strand barbed wire fence. And it stepped over it as if you and I would step over a two-foot fence. And wow. as soon as it stepped over the fence on the other side in this wide open field, there was no brush out there, nothing. You could see everything. It got on all fours, and as he said, it bounded off. And I said, yep. describe how it left again when you say bound. He says, well, when it got on all fours, then it took out like he said, He said, Lance, do you see that tree line back there in the back of the field? And it was probably about the length, uh, about a football field. And I said, I do. He said, it took one bounce to the left, slightly to the left. And when it left, it would bound left, bound right, bound left, bound right. And I know what you're talking about when you say Pepe Le Pew, like everything is close together, his feet are close together, and he bounces. And this guy said that, it bounded maybe in four to five bounds, and every time it bound forward, it would go a little zig, zag, zig, zag. It was gone in about five bounds. It was done. He said every time it left, it was like a 30 to 40 yard. It was incredible, the leaping yeah. distance, but it did I it really- so fast. And he used that word over right. and over, bounding. Yep. It was like lightning fast. It was quick. I've seen the cheetah runs at the Savari Zoo mm-hmm. in San Diego. It was quicker than that. When I saw it take off from all horns and into the tree line, it didn't do any zigzagging, though, because I don't think it saw me as a threat, so it just wanted to show off to me. So all I saw was it the tail bounding in front of me. That's it. And then it disappeared in the tree line. And I'm like, what the? Mm-hmm. See, when I had saw it move at first, I was like, it seemed like it was nonchalant, like kind of like hopping maybe uh, five to ten feet at a time, maybe. And I'm like, huh, you know, it's a freaking tail. What is that? But, you know, the tail in the darkness, what is that? And then, you know, the minute that's what I saw, I don't know but, uh, you know, how I kind of got into everything has kind of started opening up and things are coming back to me. Um, well, I can give you a few more stories uh, about times in my life where, what the hell was that? You know, um, one of them is that came back to me recently and started to, started to trigger me again. 
it was it triggered me again because I pushed it away, uh, Lance, and I, I put it away because nobody really believed me. And I didn't like people already think I'm kind of out there on the things I do with my life. And uh, give you an example, I take RC cars, put them on the front of, <clears throat> or I take RC cars and go down hills on my longboard with them and like use them to tow me and stuff. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's, just, it's just a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. You gotta try it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm like, you know, uh, I've never played a musical instrument in my life. Really. I started saxophone when I was little, but never caught on, never played it. Um, and I decided I wanted to be able to play the flute. So I started playing the Native American flute and combining it with longboarding so I can flute skate. And uh, then I came across the Peruvian flute, which I really adore and love. And But why I'm bringing up flutes is because I believe that these things are lewd in the flutes. And why I think they're lewd in the flutes, because last, last year I went back to that location, but I didn't go into the exact spot because I was too scared to go into the darkness. Um, and, yeah, straight up I was just kind of freaked out. I didn't want to do battle with that thing because I thought I was that one night but you know we have the hockey rink and the racetrack in that area and I went back with my Native American flute and I've gotten pretty good I'm not trying to brag or anything but I I, I just understand that it's not about blowing which sounds I don't suggest anybody going telling that they blow flutes all day <laughs> but <laughs> you breathe into a flute you it's all about the breath you breathe and uh, I started uh, like exercising breathing and it's like it's a form of breathing I mean it's a form of exercise and we're doing it constantly throughout the day so I wanted to be able to do it with a flute and all this and uh, in a way I kind of feel like after meeting this thing that maybe it, sh- it wanted me to start playing the flute I don't know that's just kind of a crazy thought that I kind of think but I went back that time and I played my Native American flute before I discovered uh, Peruvian flutes and uh, I stood under this new awning or like metal shelter that they have right in front of the front entrance of the hockey rink and I played my flute right there and it echoed and I'm like wow this sounds great under this you know and it echoes throughout the whole park I'm like this is amazing I, it sounds because when you bring uh, flutes into like a, a ambient or you know a place that has echo Mm. Flutes sound amazing. I mean, really, you hear the vibrations a lot more. Mm-hmm. And uh, I started playing my flute for about a half hour. Or, uh, time, it seems like when you play flutes, uh, time slows down in a way. Because you mm. think, wow, I've been playing my flute, and you look over, and it's only been 10 minutes, but it's because you're focusing so much on uh, breathing that it, I think you kind of get lost in what you're doing. You know, you focus it so and, and bound on what you want to uh, do at the time that you lose track of time. I can't really tell how long it was or how long I was playing this flute, but I was playing the flute for the creature. And I was. I wanted to do it. I wanted to play it for him. And the the hockey rink has a tin roof on it. And before you know it, I heard something behind me on the tin roof. Like I heard something scrambling towards me. And it sounded like nails or claws, because I know what it was. Mm-hmm. I, I just know you have this feeling, you have these senses now. My sense of has, my since seeing this thing, my senses have opened up, and I know that that thing was. It, I know the path it took because it's darkness too. I know certain parts of that park where they're dark, and I know it was able to get behind the roof, crawl up, and I I like heard it scrambling towards me, and then as soon as I stopped playing the flute, it would stop. And then I'd start playing the flute again. And then about a minute later, I'd hear it scrambling again. I'm like, whoa, that's weird. Like, what is that? And then I'd hear it scrambling again. And then before you know it, it was right, on, uh, right above me. And I'm like, ah, uh, yeah. And I kind of just skated on off. And that was one of the, um, you know, I didn't see anything that time, but I know that thing was there. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was my mind playing tricks on me. But I know I heard something above me, like, it wasn't there wasn't any reason why I was like stopping to like did I hear that right? Like 
at first, you know, I had stopped and been like, did I hear something on the roof? Huh. Just because I didn't start playing again. Oh, I heard it again. It's kind of weird. And I heard it again. And like, you know, and it, it started to just kind of build. And by the time it got on top of me, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm done. I'm going. And that's kind of, this is before I started to figure out things about, um, you know, cryptids and cryptozoology 